Hi everyone, Sertab here. In this video I will be talking about how to use optimization and open solver with Microsoft Excel so that you can include optimization into your decision making process for FPL. There are already some content available on, uh, on the internet on this very topic so you can search for FPL optimization maybe open solver and then you will find some resources in this video though I will start from the very beginning I will start with the question why we are using optimization what is optimization and how you can solve an optimization problem using the FPL data to this end let me start by talking about why we need optimization so in analytics there are multiple steps the first step starts with collecting the data so obviously after every game week in FPL you end up with plenty of data like how many shots taken how many goals have been scored uh, how many minutes a player have played so you collect this data from multiple resources so you can use the official FPL API for example you can use websites like FBREF so after you have this data then the second step is just cleaning the data sanitizing it and finding valuable insights for upcoming weeks so at this point after this point you can also use statistical methods like regression machine learning maybe to make a forecast going forward so you are thinking about what will happen in the future but even with the perfect information suppose you have the perfect information available suppose you know what exactly will happen FPL is still not an easy problem to solve because there are over 600 players in this game and you need to be deciding 15 players and if you include also the taking transfer hits or using your chips the problem gets quite complicated but as I said even for the simple problem even if you have the perfect information available you know what will happen in the future decision making is not easy so you can automate most of these steps like data collecting maybe sanitizing it or maybe you can use websites like FPL review where you can get the, the forecast for the upcoming week already collected cleaned and all already made a forecast for you then the question is how am I going to make a decision based on this data available so I will be talking about that last step now I will show you a very simple graph about analytics steps that j I have just mentioned so that you can visualize what we are doing here so on the bottom we have a maturity level and on the left we have value so you can also think this as the value added to your decision making so the first step is obviously using a descriptive analytics tool so this is collecting the data and asking the question what did happen and then you run some diagnostic analytics and you are trying to answer why did this happen why did these events happen uh, you can be asking for example why did a certain player got this much uh, expected goals rating and then you get your insight so you are saying okay what will happen next game week that's what I'm interested in so because based on this available data based on the form of the player or maybe the statistics you have collected you are asking what will happen next game week and this is where these predictive tools are coming into play but suppose you have the information available then the last step is called prescriptive analytics and you're answering the question what should I do what's my optimal course of action so at this point I should mention that all these statistics and machine learning methods to f to make a forecast about the future or maybe simulation they are inside predictive analytics step and the last step prescriptive analytics there are obviously multiple tools but the tool I am going to talk today is optimization and we are using this kind of analysis because 
there are lots of combinations here. So in FPL, you are trying to decide 15 players in your sugar, right? So the, suppose you are using your wild card or free hit or whatever, where you can create a squad from scratch. Okay, so you are choosing 15 players. In FPL, there are over 600 players you can choose these 15 players from. And just to simplify it, suppose you are in between maybe let's say 30 players, okay, you have 30 players and you are trying to choose 15 out of this 30. By the way, I'm simplifying the problem, obviously there are certain conditions like the team constraint and the position constraint, but just uh, stick with me for a, for a second. So you have 30 players, you are trying to choose 15 out of them. And as you see, the number is 1.5 times 10 to 2, 8. So it's a big number. And if you are thinking, oh, maybe I can just generate all these combinations of 15 players out of 30 players, and I can evaluate, I can measure how much total expected points I will get next week, and then I will choose it from the sample. This is still a big number. But consider you expanded your set to 60 players. Then this number is 10 to 13. So the problem gets almost too big to handle with a simple iteration. And if you think about it, in FPL, there are over 600 players. And you might be thinking about maybe eliminating some of them. But there are complicated issues. Like you can have only three players from, from a single team. Then the total number of combination is 10 to the 29. I mean, that's a big, big number. You can't really iterate this, any kind of approach to simply iterate all these combinations. So this is where optimization comes into play. Optimization uses smart algorithms so that you can get the absolute best out of all these combinations. Obviously, there are some conditions that you need to uh, satisfy, but the model I will talk about is the linear uh, version where the decisions you are making and then the, the players you are choosing, they all satisfy certain conditions. So at the end of optimization, you will get the mathematically proven solution that will maximize your expected points. So optimization eliminates most of these solutions for you automatically and we know mathematically that they cannot involve the best overall so one thing i need to mention is optimization is widely used in business settings uh, it is a valuable tool the problem with optimization is it is hard to use without actually knowing the theory behind it but in this video, I will try to make it very simple so that you can start using optimization and include into your decision making. I will first go to fbrreview.com, which is a great uh, website, uh, just to mention. FPL Review uh, has two models. The first one is called Massive Data, which I will be using here. So the Massive Data model provides expected points for the upcoming game week. So I, here I will choose only one uh, uh, game week projection because we will try to solve a simpler version of uh, the FPL problem. For team ID, I will just use uh, one. If you use your own team ID, you can see your actual sell uh, price and buy price for players. But I will simplify the problem here, so I won't be using the sell price exactly. And here we have all of our values. Click all players here. And click download data. By the way, I should mention that FBI Review has such great uh, website design. I absolutely love these drawings of players. So we have the data available now. What I will do is I will open uh, Excel. I will open a blank uh, worksheet. Let me also increase the size. Here I will click data and I will click from text to CSV. And I will go to downloads and here it is. I will say import. The reason we are doing it this way because 
some of the player names include uh, special characters uh, from multiple languages and if you open CSV directly then those characters uh, won't be displayed uh, correctly. I will click load and here we go. So for the next game week, so the time I'm recording this video, the upcoming ga game week is game week 21 and you have your expected minutes and expected points here. So, so for the problem I'm going to show you here, I won't be using uh, the cell value so I will just delete this column for now and also I will uh, I will be only using points but I will keep uh, the, the other uh, columns. Before we actually solve the the actual problem, actual FPL problem, I will just try to solve a simpler problem that I call goalkeeper problem. So the, the, the problem is very simple. You have a limited budget. Uh, so you have decided that you don't want to spend more than 9.5 millions on both of your goalkeepers, your lineup goalkeeper and your bench goalkeeper. And you are wondering what's the optimal pick for these two. Um, so that's the problem we are going to answer today and then later we will expand it to the full FPL problem but for that reason I will just filter this data and I will only get goalkeepers and here I will just grab these all these columns and I will just copy them here so we have predictions, we have minutes, we have the teams, we have the buy value. We will be using these uh, for our decision making. Let me actually sort this uh, by the points so that we can see the best goalkeeper. So obviously there is a limited number of players that we are expecting uh, to start uh, the game and most of these goalkeepers their value is just zero. Here um, what I will do is I will also talk about open solver. So for optimization you need to have a solver on your PC. So there are websites, I know there are websites uh, they are claiming that they are doing optimization for you but the fact that optimization is an expensive operation you cannot really do it on a browser tab it is possible, it, it could happen, but it requires a, a, a significant computing power, especially for FPL. If you are thinking about, if you are only maybe optimizing a single game week, then maybe, yeah, that maybe the problem is not that difficult. But if you are m optimizing for multiple game weeks, and then if you include transfers, or chips, whatever, the problem gets really, really, really big you cannot really use just the JavaScript for example to optimize as the problem gets bigger and you need to have a solver of some sort. You need to have either maybe an open source or a commercial solver to solve these problems. So luckily there is a solver add-in on Microsoft Excel. There is also something called uh, open solver. Open Solver for Excel is an uh, Excel add-in and it is capable of solving the linear integer and nonlinear optimization problems on Excel. So this is the tool I will be using. So to be honest, I'm using um, Python for my own uh, decision making. But for those who are using Excel exclusively, so I wanted to show you that using optimization is not that difficult and here I will be downloading it and so as you see they are talking about the different types of downloads so there is a linear version and there's an advanced version I will go grab the linear version because the, the problem we are going to solve is a linear version but you can always come back here and then download the, the nonlinear version too um, so I will just extract it here. Okay, so we have the add-in here. I will click File, Options, and Add-ins. 
and exile add-ins and if you come here you will see that solver add-in is already here so this is the exiles default solver add-in i will just use the one we have just downloaded open solver as you see now i'm loading it when i click ok you will notice that a new uh, group of options buttons appear and so this is the tool that we are going to use so we will use this uh, to define our optimization model optimization problem and then we will use it to solve so here so we need to first represent this problem mathematically so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say whether I am going to use a, a goalkeeper for my lineup okay pick lineup and then the second one will be my bench goalkeeper okay so think this as kind of a true false value or a binary value where this field should get value 1 if you are choosing a goalkeeper and otherwise it should get value 0 so I will start with 0 everywhere and when we are moving forward we will ask optimization to just find which goalkeeper I, I want for my lineup and bench and suppose this is the optimal solution okay so this is how I will represent I will say that Ederson will be my lineup goalkeeper Mandy will be my bench goalkeeper for example so for now I will keep this zero and just to distinguish easier what is what I will be coloring these uh, columns uh, with green so that I will know that these values are subject to change with optimization and these points are my raw data so these are the parameters so you can still update your belief based on you know how many points a goalkeeper can get but this is the raw data that we are feeding into optimization so after you decide these values I mean you are not expected to change them much unless you have a reason to do and here I will say okay so suppose I chose um, Ellison for my lineup goalkeeper so so I will add an, another field that shows how much um, how much it costs me so this is the cost of my lineup goalkeeper and this will be the cost of my uh, bench goalkeeper so this is simply says that so multiplied lineup with by value so obviously this will be zero for everyone except the goalkeeper I'm trying to uh, choose for my lineup so this will simplify things for me and I will do the, th the same thing for my bench goalkeeper bench uh, pick bench times by value okay so suppose uh, Patricio is my bench goalkeeper then uh, I can see numerically what it will cost me so since these fields are outcome of my decisions I will just color them blue and these will be the the values that we will be feeding into optimization I, I will say that okay my total budget is this so make sure that the sum of these two fields in this case for example the sum is 11.3 is obviously out of my budget if I have a limited budget let's say 9.5 then obviously this will be out of my budget uh, I will make these zero again and I will also talk about whether uh, so one of the things you need to know about optimization is you define a solution space in a way that you are saying what's possible and what's not and one of the things that could happen here if I just you know try to model this problem directly is optimization has no idea that it cannot choose a goalkeeper it needs to choose a different goalkeeper from your lineup for your lineup and bench I mean you can't obviously choose the same goalkeeper twice so uh, I will say picked ever and this will be the sum of these two values and I will say later you will see that I will force optimization to to keep this number below or less than or equal to one meaning that I can I won't be able to choose you know Mandy for for both positions so this this value should be less than or equal to one so so 
now we have kind of def already defined what we are trying to decide and how we are measuring it uh, at the end whether you know we are making uh, like feasible choices or not so we need to have a performance measure so what will happen at the end you know what are you trying to maximize obviously here in FPL I mean we are trying to maximize our points right so I will say so I will have my total points here actually I will add just it here so based on which goalkeeper I'm choosing so you will have a points field and this points field could represent your uh, preference I should say so obviously your goalkeeper your lineup goal goalkeeper times the expected points will give you the points you are taking from your goalkeeper I mean, this is uh, if this this is value one, then multiplying with the points, you will get the points, expected points you are getting from this goalkeeper. But how about your bench goalkeeper? So what you can do is you can still multiply the bench goalkeeper with the points, but obviously you are not getting the bench point uh, exactly. So you can assign maybe a weight to it. So there are multiple ways to handle this issue, by the way. So this is not the only, issue, uh, only way of doing this. But you can say that I believe my lineup goalkeeper will uh, be playing 90%. And let's say for 10%, if, it, he, if he doesn't play, then I want my bench goalkeeper's um, point to affect uh, my uh, my decision making so I will keep this at 10% for now we can uh, play with it going forward and I will just color them blue because it's the outcome and you will see that if I choose let's say Ellison for my uh, like primary uh, goalkeeper and let's say Leno for my bench goalkeeper for example then the point I'm getting from my lineup goalkeeper is exactly equal to its uh, points and for my bench goalkeeper I'm getting only 10% of it and my total points will be simply the sum of all these fields so this is the number I'm trying to maximize currently it is 4.11 but are there any other picks that are there any other combinations that will maximize my points that's the answer I'm trying that's the question I'm trying to answer so we talked about total points about the budget so I will say that total cost is simply sum of these two fields okay so currently uh, Leno is 5 and Ellison is 5.9 uh, my total cost is 10.9 as right now so but I will define a budget and I will change this value um, going forward I will just color it uh, yellow so that uh, we understand this a parameter that it's a, it's a value we can actually play and here um, let's see and so finally um, total maybe uh, picked goalkeeper lineup and picked goalkeeper bench so this will be simply the sum of all the values here uh, similarly for bench I'm adding these two columns or these two metrics because I want to make sure that I'm choosing a lineup goalkeeper and a bench goalkeeper goalkeeper so I will force optimization to make these fields equal to one because if optimization forgets to choose one then you it, it could be saying okay maybe instead of this I will just get the best goalkeeper uh, based on the expected points which will maximize by total points within a budget then I'm done but the problem is you have the optimization haven't chosen a bench goalkeeper so I will force optimization to uh, pick exactly one lineup goalkeeper and exactly one bench goalkeeper I think we are ready to uh, model the problem finally and so this will be uh, relatively quick I will click model and model and I will get this uh, pop-up screen which explains what's what but 
just to go over it the first one is our objective so this is the value you are trying to maximize or minimize in this case we are maximizing points so I will click maximize and then I will choose this single cell so this is what I'm trying to maximize is what I'm saying so the variable cells are simply these all these values so I'm saying that these are the things that you are allowed to change so I'm not allowing any other field to uh, I'm not allowing optimization to change any other fields so when you give these variable cells optimization knows that that these values can be played with so maybe the model can set it to 0 0.5 but obviously 0 0.5 doesn't mean anything in our context so we need to say to the optimization model that you see all these values here these should be binary meaning they could be either 0 or 1 if you don't define this then optimization can assign uh, continuous values like 0 0.5 0 0.7 I don't know 1.2 um, there is also an option for making integer selections which we will be covering it when we are talking about the full uh, FBL problem but for now I will choose binary and I will say add constraint now optimization is allowed to play with these numbers make them binary and then optimization will try to maximize this total points field the problem is it doesn't know the regulation so we need to tell them uh, uh, we need to tell model what is allowed and what's not so in this case I will say add new constraint and then I will say total cost should be less than or equal to my budget that's it so now optimization knows that the, whatever selection I'm going to make it will be always it should be inside the budget so this value here should be always less than or equal to my budget and so we also need to tell optimization that this field should be equal to one exactly so I know this, this is the case so I can give it this uh, one directly without any cell reference um, I will add this similarly I will do it for the bench goalkeeper I want this to be equal to one no matter what and at this point we are very close to finishing the model so one thing that I'm missing is uh, picked ever column should be less than or equal to one because we cannot choose the same goalkeeper for lineup and bench so if we don't add this constraint then optimization thinks that it is allowed uh, so in this case I will say this picked ever column here should be always less than or equal to one as you see you can also choose a range and still say that this should be less than or equal to one and this will apply to each of these columns uh, individually I will click Save Model and and you will see that Open Solver already colored these fields for us so it's showing us that this is binary uh, these are forced to be less than or equal to one and this is the field I'm trying to maximize so this field is less than or equal to this one and finally for these two we want them to be equal to one like currently it is an infeasible solution as you see this is what we call an infeasible solution because obviously this cell is not equal to one so I will choose a goalkeeper here these constraints are satisfied these this constraint the budget constraint is not satisfied right now so um, just to clear everything so I will say zero solution I don't know anything how about you play with these numbers and tell me what's the optimal so I will click solve so th this is basically it so you solved your first optimization problem and it turned out the the goalkeeper are uh, uh, goalkeeper for the lineup is uh, Mandy and our bench goalkeeper is Sanchez so for the budget as you see it hit the budget exactly so it chose a lineup goalkeeper and a bench goalkeeper and maximized our total points you can play with hand and then try to, to beat this number but it's not mathematically it's not possible and we know it for sure 
um, so what you can do here now is up to you so you can define how much budget you have for the goalkeepers you can play with this number you can say that maybe what if I only have 9.3 budget available and what will happen if I solve it then as you see Mendy is still our lineup goalkeeper but our bench goalkeeper is someone else with only you know zero uh, expected points which is possible so there could be alternate optimal solutions meaning that if I am going to just choose Mendy uh, for my primary goalkeeper with the rest of the budget I can choose anyone I want as long as they satisfy the budget right so optimization checks these values and then you see uh, none of them are available to fit into my budget if Mendy is my primary goalkeeper then it just simply chooses any of these goalkeepers regardless of their expected points but if I change my budget to let's say 10 so obviously I have lots of uh, room to optimize if I click Sol then you will see that um, my primary goalkeeper changes but my bench goalkeeper is still a player who is not expected to feature and if my budget is 12 because I mean 6 is the highest as far as I know um, if I have 12 budget meaning that you practically have no limit on how much money you can spend on your goalkeeper not a practical problem but as you see optimization knows that uh, it can basically choose the top two goalkeepers one for your lineup one for your bench and then the total points will be this so again I, as I said so this is up to you so so the decision making is uh, what you will do. Optimization can give you the, the optimal solution, but still what I can do here is I can say my budget is nine. Okay, so this is my uh, total point. So I will just record it here so that you will uh, see, you know, how, so this was my budget. This is why this was a total XP so that you will be able to uh, compare it for yourself so suppose I increased my budget by 25 I said 925 is my um, budget now I'll come here I will click solve and then for this um, so I'm writing my budget I mean obviously the total cost is less than my budget but it doesn't matter uh, from my perspective um, I am saying that how about 9.5 and then you will be able to solve it very within seconds. Nine. How about nine seventy-five? It is four point seventy. And finally, let's try ten. And then I will just talk about you know what to do with the, all these numbers. And as you see, it is four point seven seven. So this is what you can use for your decision making obviously you can try lots of different budgets you can try different combinations but for this um, uh, so this problem is itself called a knapsack problem in optimization context but so obviously if you increase your budget your total XP will increase but the, the increments will be smaller as you keep increasing your budget we know that the 12 is maximum actually not even 12 I think 11 something uh, if you have that much budget I mean you can get the best goalkeepers and then you will be done with it uh, if you keep increasing your budget all the way to 8 I think 4 is the cheapest goalkeeper then uh, let me actually try it I'm curious yeah zero so you cannot really <laughs> use anyone who is expected to be in the game I think 8.5 will be the absolute uh, lowest to have some sort of return yeah 3.8 but anyway from here to maybe 9.5 again the, the increment is around 0 0.5 but from 9.5 to 10 I mean the increment is only 0 0.1 so optimization gives you an idea on how much uh, the optimal solution will also change based on your uh, preferences in here um, you can look at these numbers and you can say that from 9.7 to 5 to 10 the, the, the value only changes 0 0.07 and from here to here I mean 
it's 0 0.03 so I will maybe go with 9.5 as my final budget and then you see if I choose 9.5 if I solve it these two will be my uh, goalkeeper selections I mean you can if you want you can um, click uh, click here hide the model you can play with this I mean you you, you see that Sanchez is 4.4 um, you can say I don't want Sanchez How about someone else I can say maybe uh, with 4.8 uh, uh, maybe Pickford is better for for this price but then your total cost is exceeding your budget so you can play with this you can say that how about these two combination and obviously this is inside my budget but as you see uh, it is much worse than uh, the other way around as I mentioned you can play with this you can change the points you can change the uh, weight you are giving to your bench goalkeeper and then uh, get maybe valuable insights so in this uh, video I try to cover the basics how you add open solver to Excel and how you solve how you can solve um, a very basic goalkeeper problem where you are trying to choose only a, a lineup goalkeeper and a bench goalkeeper so but you might be able to see how we can expand it to the full FPL so we will have 15 players with 11 starting players 4 bench players and there is a limit on how many defenders midfielders and for forwards we can have also we will have budget constraint and we will have team constraints you, you cannot have more than 3 players coming from the same uh, Premier League team so all these actually are now possible so you can even play by yourself and just figure out how to do it uh, in the next video hopefully I will be covering how it can be translated into the, sing the single period full FPL problem one thing I need to mention again is uh, so the optimization obviously you don't need to do optimization you can just use your own uh, you know decision making process you can say I will just sort these by values and then pick two players from this list and one player from this list um, but as long as you know your expectation by not losing optimization you are losing your edge because if I have the exact same information as you do if your predictions are exactly equal to my predictions then by using optimization I am guaranteeing maximizing my expected value whereas you could be just um, skipping a feasible solution because you are trying to do you, you are trying to optimize by yourself there are multiple ways to do optimization obviously this is not the only way but in this video I try to uh, show you how you can include an uh, open source optimization solver into your FPL decision making process if you have any questions I will be happy to answer and thank you very much for listening to me